Hey everybody, welcome to my video game video. Still working on that title. So some big announcements were made this week uh, at GDC as well as the last part of PAX East. Battlefield 4 was announced. They had a teaser on Vine about a week, week and a half ago. It was a still six second tease showing um, pistons and screws and things of that nature. It looked like they were from a tank. Um, they went on to show more about it. They actually went on to show uh, 17 minutes of footage of actual gameplay. Um, Battlefield 4 looks beautiful. They're using the new Frostbite 3 engine and it just look, looks amazing. It makes me want to go back and play Battlefield 3. Uh, I wasn't too big of a fan of it when I first played it, um, much due to the whole um, download for HD. I was stuck on my, my hard drive and I couldn't download an HD version of it so I was a little irked about that. But um, I want to go back and play it again and uh, see what I missed out because I didn't give it a, f a fair time. Um, Battlefield 4 looks amazing. Um, it looks like they really stepped up the game. The, it's beautiful. The graphics, it blows your mind um, how good they're making these games look nowadays. From what was said uh, previously about where games and graphics are going these days, uh, the next step is having to do with lighting and things of that nature, shadows. Um, those kind of things because uh, we're almost reaching the peak of uh, how good a game will look when it comes to um, lifelike quality of characters on the screen so um, with this game it looks even better than number three did in their trailers um, it looks better than um, a lot of other games that I can think of um, one I recently played was Far Cry 3 I thought Far Cry 3 looked great and this looks even better from uh, from what they showed us now that might the case might be that it is uh, next gen, uh, what they're showing is the next gen quality, um, but even if that's the case, it looks, it looks gorgeous. I'm really excited about this one. Also, back uh, a few months ago, uh, they showed off, um, Konami showed off a game, uh, Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes. Uh, this was teased as an open world shooter, open world Metal Gear game. Um, but they didn't give much information other than a really great looking uh, uh, trailer gameplay type stuff. Um, and then they also released recently uh, another trailer uh, type gameplay thing for what was called the Phantom Pain. Um, it was really thought that this Phantom Pain which was uh, shown as it was made by, produced by a different company. But um, when the, the name of it came up there was parts of it missing and it, well, the internet deduced it down to um, the Metal Gear being layered over the Phantom Pain. Um, it has now been announced at GDC that they, it is Metal Gear Solid 5 the Phantom Pain. Um, they're using the new Fox engine and uh, again as like I said with Battlefield 4 these games are becoming really beautiful looking games very lifelike even closer to what it is and what I like about from both of these trailers so far is that like I said earlier is that the lighting is like spectacular. Um, it's almost realistic uh, when they're showing a game when in part of this gameplay footage, whether it be in Battlefield 4 or um, Metal Gear Solid 5 Phantom, right, Phantom Pain, that they have this dusk setting and the shadows and light glaring, things of that nature, or spotlights. Uh, uh, it looks amazing. I mean, I, I'm just excited what this next generation is going to be able to do with the Unreal Engine 4 um, and Fox, uh, new Fox engine, the new Frostbite 3 engine. Um, these are all stepping up their game. They're competing against each other to be the new Unreal Engine 3 pretty much. Now I never really played uh, the Metal Gear Solid games, uh, but I, this does get me interested a little bit. Um, I definitely want to go pick up the HD collection of the Metal Gear Solid games and give those a try. I do hear they're uh, they're good stealth games, good uh, good shooting games, but as well as they're a little off, the little they're a little wacky from what I've been told. Um, let me know what you guys think. Fill me in. Give me some comments. Uh, what do you suggest I start with? Because I I have heard that they do go out of order. Um, so let me know. Give me some pointers, guys. Also at GDC, one of my favorite games of last year had a panel and they announced some things as well. Borderlands 2. The people at Gearbox were able to announce a teaser for the next uh, DLC. It's called Bunkers and Badasses. Uh, it, it looks really funny just off the start. You have uh, Tiny Tina, uh, some of the other characters, um, Brick, uh, Mordecai. Uh, all of them are sitting around a table playing what is like a Dungeons and Dragons type game and, and Tiny Tina is like the Dungeon Master. It looks really cool, really funny. It's just a teaser right now. They really haven't shown us much else other than that, but it looks really funny and as uh, Borderlands 2 has done so far, I mean it's a great game. I can't wait till this DLC comes out. With this DLC though, they also announced a teaser a couple weeks back 
and they finally revealed it. They have a new character as well. Um, you start off the game with four characters. They added the Mechromancer in, and now they're going to add in this um, psycho bandit called Krieg into the game. Um, it looks awesome. I, I definitely am interested in this one as well as playing all the way through all the other characters and their styles of play. But this one looks really cool. They added some things to it regarding the uh, your second win time when you're trying to get back up and revitalize yourself. They added some gameplay elements that you don't see in other uh, characters. It, it looks really cool, really imaginative. Uh, it's it's good, uh, good uses of the uh, of the character um, and the skill trees. I'm very excited about this. I can't wait to put Borderlands 2 back in the system and play it again. And the last part of news for this week, we got another game coming out next week that I'm kind of excited about. It's called De Defiance. Uh, this game is going hand in hand with the TV show Defiance on the Sci-Fi Network. The TV show starts on April 15th. The game comes out this next uh, Tuesday. Um, they both, it's one big universe. One isn't based on the other. Um, they work hand in hand. It is a shooter MMO, and because it has these MMO uh, qualities to it, it is an MMO actually, uh, it's going to be able to communicate with the TV show. I don't know what type of changes or, or, or things it's going to be able to cha uh, add to the TV show because of this, but it does seem interesting of what they're going to be able to do, what, um, which, which direction they go with the characters on the TV show or which direction they go with some of the storyline in the game because of the TV show. Uh, whether it's popular or whether the game's popular, whether one's not one. You know, it, it, it's really interesting what they're doing. Do you guys think this will work? Do you guys think this is a good idea to have such a huge investment in two entities that aren't exactly in the same uh, entertainment genre, the entertainment, entertainment field? Um, do you think it'll work? Let me know what you guys think. The game does look pretty cool. It's a third person shooter, MMO, you have missions, you are, are an arc hunter, you're going around looking for pieces of falling spaceships that could be tech, could be aliens, could be all kinds of things. It looks definitely very interesting to me and I can't wait to get my hands on one of those. Alright guys, now time for video game of the week. This week I've been playing Bioshock Infinite and that is going to be the choice of the week. This game is wonderful. It's well made. It looks great. Story pushes the, the whole game forward. The gunplay is awesome. Uh, I don't really have anything negative to say about it. Uh, it's just a beautiful, great, well made game. Um, I'm really excited to get into it and play it even more. Uh, I want to go back and do the 1999 features. The the characters really really pop to you. You know, um, I remember when I first met Elizabeth, right when I uh, opened the window in her tower to see her. And it was they played they played this perfectly timed music um, to that opening, and, and it was just amazing. I loved it. It, it really caught me. Um, her character, the voice matches it perfectly. Uh, Troy Troy Baker did a wonderful job with Booker Dewitt. Um, Irrational Games does a great job lending the uh, lending the story to the game, letting it push it forward, letting it be a very intricate part of the game. Um, I really love this about them. They have created this world of Columbia that it, it, you just fall into, and it's natural. It, it there's no uh, trying to figure out why, like, why am I even up here? It just goes with the flow. It's perfect. Um, I don't know what to say other than just praise of this game. Um, you guys definitely need to go out there and play it, uh, rent it, buy it, whatever you can. Get your hands on it as soon as possible because if you don't, you're going to be missing out on a great game. I really love the replay value on Bioshock Infinite. Um, they give you another mode called 1999 mode. Uh, it was originally made because back in the day, uh, which was Wednesday most likely, uh, when games were made, they were made a little more difficult than they were than they are today. Today, a lot of games seem to be like they're holding the player's hands throughout most of it. Um, because of that, they put in this mode where it's going to be a lot more difficult to finish the games, and to me, that just is awesome. Because there's, like I said, uh, aside from the Demon Souls, the Dead, uh, and uh, Dark Souls, there aren't a lot of games that are going to be pushing this boundary of very difficult gameplay. Um, you still get your Mario games nowadays, nowadays that are still very tough game um, platforming. But they are also holding your hand too at certain sections because they add in a cheat fe feature where it'll just do it for you. Um, PlayStation is actually adding a concept to their social networking in the PlayStation 4 that is like a hand, hand holding uh, aspect to gaming where if you can't pass a part of the game, uh, one of your friends can jump into your game whether they have it or not and they can play from their house. Um, so, I mean, I like what Irrational is doing with this. They're keeping it 
fresh, uh, keeping it keeping it old school, I guess you could say, and and not bending uh, bending over, making it a lesser game for for the general public. It, it's for gamers who love the game, love to play games, and, and if you're up to the task, play it on this level because you'll get even more uh, joy out of it. There are some cool achievements for it that really caught my attention. One of them was not buying anything from the dollar uh, dollar bill. Uh, vending machine which is really cool um, I think that to get that achievement and not buying anything from there which is going to be pretty tough um, especially if the difficulty on everything is harder I, w uh, I definitely think that would be a tough one to get I would try it myself next time I get my, uh, my next playthrough again I can't repeat enough how well how well made this game is how good the game is as a whole you got your um, your storyline is awesome your gunplay is great amazing gunplay uh, with the vigors and the guns, the weapons, your sky rail, uh, amazing. Feels like you're on a roller coaster, uh, just going for the ride of your life. Um, I just can't say enough nice things about this game to fully convey my feelings about it. Uh, within an hour of playing the game, I was just in love. I really love it. One of my favorite games of the last couple years. Um, along with in my other segment, I said Borderlands 2. Two games in the last two years. Uh, Great games, love them to death. Like I said, this is the video game of the week. Um, it could possibly be video game of the year. Um, I definitely think this is going to be uh, putting up stiff competition to uh, win video game of the year through a lot of uh, media sites, uh, published uh, periodicals, um, and just in the industry as, in general. It's going to be it's going to be pretty tough to beat this one. That's the end of the show today. Let me know what you guys think, your questions, your comments, your inquiries, your ideas in the comments below. Uh, click that like, share, subscribe button. Let's keep this conversation going, guys, and I want to say have a great weekend.